Most people are now only too aware of the disastrous effects of the climate crisis and the many ways that we humans are contributing to it. Scientists say that over the next decade, we have to reduce global emissions in half to give us a good chance of limiting global heating to below the critical two degrees Celsius of warming. Otherwise, the ever-growing number of heat waves, droughts and floods that we have witnessed will continue to rise dramatically. But according to the UN, in 2019, humans released more CO2 into the atmosphere than ever before. It's a challenge that we all need to face. But here in Ireland, we are way behind when it comes to reaching our emissions targets. We all need to start doing more. So what are the most practical steps we can take as individuals and communities to reduce our carbon footprint? average for carbon emissions is about four tonnes of CO2 per person every year. And scientists say this amount must be cut in half by 2030 to be on track to avoid the worst effects of climate change. But we have a long way to go. Our individual carbon footprint in Ireland averages out at almost 13 tonnes each every year. It takes 16 acres of forest a whole year to compensate for the amount of carbon that each one of us produces through our everyday actions. Ireland has the third highest emissions of greenhouse gases per capita in the EU. Many of the emissions produced by our economy are outside of our direct influence, but our lifestyles also have a huge role to play there is still a gap between awareness and action, and many misperceptions on the most useful steps we can take. It's easy to feel overwhelmed by the scale of this crisis and the implications for our planet. But as a psychologist, I talk to people about taking control of smaller things and making positive changes in our everyday life. I'm here at the Cool Planet Experience in Powers Court to take part in an interactive carbon footprint calculator, which measures the amount of emissions produced by our individual lifestyles. To get another perspective, I'm being joined by Kirsty McAdoo, her husband Alwyn and baby Charlie, a typical Irish family who have volunteered to discover the size of their carbon footprint compared to the average person worldwide. What kind of vehicles are you traveling? So we have a hybrid electric. electric. Oh, and I drive a diesel car. The Cool Planet Experience is a fun but eye-opening way to measure our environmental impact. Almost everything we do leaves a trail of CO2 in its wake, from the stuff we buy to the food we eat. It all requires energy. Oh, the question about flights. I've taken two domestics. This produces the ever-increasing amounts of CO2 entering the atmosphere, which has been wreaking havoc with our planet's ability to cool itself. Finally one I'm ticking all the boxes. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Some recycling. 13,000. Wow. Yeah. I thought we would be better on the house, actually, because yeah. we have insulated the house and we've done all of that sort of stuff that's supposed to be good and make a big change, but obviously it's, there's something yeah. in there so. that we're not doing enough of. So, why are we in Ireland so far above the global average? And what can we do about it? What are the common misperceptions about carbon emissions that we have? Typically, if you ask the general public, um, you know, what, what do you think is the most effective way to reduce your carbon footprint? Recycling is usually right up there at the top. People say, oh, definitely recycling, reducing waste, making sure I turn the lights off at home, things like that. But actually, those types of 
behaviours are actually quite far down the list in terms of impact for your carbon footprint. Reducing your use of private cars, reducing your air travel, um, increasing the efficiency of your home, those are all very impactful behaviours, but it's interesting in that we typically see almost the reverse of that in most survey studies. Eating local in season, reducing meat and dairy, cutting food waste and buying less stuff are some of the steps we can take as consumers when it comes to our own environmental impact. But for many of us, energy use and transport is where we could have the most significant impact on our direct carbon footprint. With that in mind, I've come to meet Kirsty and Alwyn at home in Ballybrack to find out a little more about how their home energy use contributes to their carbon footprint. When they bought their house five years ago, it had a BER rating of G, but since then, they've upgraded the windows and doors, added heating controls, and insulated the attic and walls. Their original motivation was to live in a more comfortable home, but having learned the size of their carbon footprint, they are now determined to make their house even more energy efficient. So what more could they do to reduce the emissions from their home? We're being joined by energy consultant Mark Shirley, who is going to carry out an updated energy assessment of their house. We expect when we do the air leakage test on the building, we will be able to determine where there's some leaks in the building, give you some information on how to seal those up. Uh, we'll also do some thermal imaging, which will help to enhance uh, what we're finding with the, with the air leakage testing machine. Mm -hmm. We'll also talk to you about the upgrades that you've done, look at your previous BER, and then just try and adjust that to, to see approximately where you are now mm -hmm. and give you some advice on maybe the next steps of mm -hmm. yeah, what you should do. Okay. A building energy rating is an assessment of the energy use of the building with an A rating being the best and G the worst. It's a very cost-effective way of getting an energy audit of your home. Today, Mark is doing an even more in-depth energy survey of the building to get precise details of weak spots. What we have is a fan uh, connected to a manometer and we're going to generate a, a positive and a negative pressure in the building. When that's happening, we can go around and we can check for leaks in the building. Ensuring that our homes are well insulated is absolutely vital. Mark is using a blow door test and thermal imaging camera to see where heat is currently being lost from Kirsty and Alwyn's house. Okay, so the area of blue that you can see on the screen there is the airflow, that's the cooler air from outside being drawn back into the house by the negative pressure of the fan. And it's very evident in the bottom right hand corner of the window, the seal is not seated correctly. Yeah. So you can, you can feel quite a bit yeah. of uh, Bit, bit very in the last few years, Kirsty and Alwyn have upgraded windows and doors and insulated the walls and attic. So how effective have these measures been? So when you had the house tested before, it was a GE rating. Mark, what have you found today? We're speculatively in a B3 rating at the moment, mm -hmm. okay, which is a massive improvement. Mm -hmm. and I'm sure that you can see that both in terms yeah. of your own energy comfort and also energy bills. The measures already taken means the energy demand of this house is now less than a third of what it once was. But how does this house compare to the average home in Ireland? I've been joined by SEAI expert Gillian Gannon to get an overview of why our housing stock seems to contribute so much to Ireland's high carbon emissions. The average House in Ireland is coming in at about a C2, but we have an awful lot of very bad housing stock that's being balanced with the new housing stock that's coming in at the moment, which it all has to come in at at least an A3 rating. The SEI published a new BER map of Ireland recently enough. So you can see here, for example, that the average for this area is a C, which means when you're looking at what Kirsty and Alwyn have done, they're actually doing quite well in the area. What we would recommend people to do is to try and get the BER done do your energy efficiency stuff first and then you can start looking at the other steps after that which can be the more expensive ones but they are important to get it in time. What are the most common blind spots that people have about their energy efficiency at home? Probably one of the most common blind spots is that electricity is our biggest energy use in the home and actually it's not. Heating would be the biggest energy use that we have. So you need to be looking at the attic insulation first and foremost. Um, that's essentially your hat. 
and it's where 30% of the energy kind of leaks out through. 30%? Yeah, it's quite a lot. It's, it's important to think of it that way. The next thing you need to be looking at is your walls. So you need to be seeing if there's any gaps in the insulation in your walls or if you have the proper insulation in your walls in the first place. Once you've done all that, you will have a much, much warmer home. And this isn't the glamorous solar panels, the green bling that comes out the front of the house. It's the unglamorous stuff. It's, some might say the boring stuff, but it's the really, really important stuff. After you look at your insulation, it's important to look at heating controls then. An on-off switch is not really a heating control. What you want to be doing is being able to control different parts of the house differently, especially if you have a large house. It'll cut down your energy bills drastically as well. After that, if you look at your heating system then as well, that's the next thing you can look at. If you've got an old, boiler, whether it's gas or oil, it's important to start thinking about what you want for the future. You can get new gas and oil boilers and they're a lot more efficient, but if you're thinking about further into the future, you will be locked into that decision for the next 15, 20 years. So can you consider a heat pump? That's the next thing to ask yourself. Um, a heat pump is more expensive in the short term, but will massively save you on energy, energy bills in the long run. And there's also a sweet spot. The measures already taken means the energy demand of this house is now less than a third of what it once was, saving money and CO2 emissions. Externally insulating the walls and availing of the grants for heat pumps and solar panels would quickly bring this home to an A rating, reducing their demand by another 70%. The house is at a level where there's still some drafts that you can tidy yeah. up and we've discussed that, but it's probably substantially less drafty than when you moved in. So mm -hmm. again, you've yeah, made absolutely. those steps yourselves, yeah. which is great to see because at the end of the day, it's your comfort and it's your energy bill here. Becoming aware of our energy usage and making some conscious decisions to reduce it, we can have a positive impact on our own carbon footprints. But how much of an impact would these actions have if we work together to take action as communities? Mm -hmm.